Saints, I'm so glad that you've taken time to join us for today's Abiding Reflection. I have with me here today my three Bibles. These are my greatest possession. These have value that is far above anything else that I own. I love, love, love God's Word. This here Bible is my very first Bible. I love this Bible. It's a King James Bible. I am a King James Old English uh, Bible guy, and that's never going to change. This Bible here is a Hebrew Greek key study Bible. At the time, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. I had saved to buy a Bible. I didn't have enough for a concordance, so I figured I at least would get the Hebrew Greek key study Bible. This was my travel Bible. I traveled to Israel in this Bible. I traveled everywhere in this Bible. I've read this Bible cover to cover several times. In it, I have notes. I don't keep a journal. Every page of this Bible has writing on it. I don't keep a journal. My Bible becomes my journal. So in the Bible, I write dates. I write special events. I write the miracles that God has done in my life, the word that he's spoken in my life. I love God's word. That's this Bible. I stopped carrying it around with me uh, because it was falling apart and I didn't want to have it destroyed any further. And so what I did was I bought a different Bible, bought this Bible. This Bible is a new King James. I'm still a King Jimmy guy and I go back to the King James to read and make sure that how it's translated in the New King James is correct. I've had this Bible for a long time as well. It has tabs. My opinion, save your money. Don't get the tabs. They're a waste of money. Uh, they don't help me absolutely in anything. And actually, I think they've made me a little dumber because I used to be able to find any book of the Bible without tabs quickly. And uh, so anyway, don't get the tabs. You're welcome. <laughs> This Bible, I've taught a lot of Bible studies from this Bible. And again, I have every page of this Bible written in as well. Just studying the Bible. Love to study the Bible. That's this one. This Bible is special to me. This Bible doesn't have any writing in it whatsoever. It doesn't even have my name in it. I don't study from this Bible. I don't use this Bible to dig deep in God's Word or rightly divide God's Word. This is the Bible that sits by my nightstand. And when the Lord wakes me up early in the morning, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3, and He wants to spend time with me, hours with me sometimes, this is the Bible that I grab. Because in that moment, I don't want to learn about God. I want to know God. I want to know my Lord Jesus. I want him to speak to me, a rhema word, a word in due season. I want him to refresh me and renew me. I want to sit in his presence. So this Bible, I'm not studying it. I'm just reading it. You know, saints, just reading the Bible has tremendous value. And just opening up this book to just know his heart, to know his person, to know him, not just to learn about him, that's good too. But in this, in this Bible, Lord, I'm just looking for you. I'm not looking for you to give me a sermon or a message. I'm just looking for you. I treasure this Bible. This Bible now is my travel Bible. You can tell by its size. This bigger one took up a lot of luggage space too. And I'm already a light traveler. So um, when I changed to this, this was awesome. I have some jackets that this Bible fits right into. This is a Bible I visit people in, in jail or hospitals, things of that nature. The one thing that these three Bibles have in common is that they're the entire counsel of God. The entire counsel of God. So from Genesis to Revelation, you will find it in these three Bibles. Nothing's taken out and nothing is added in. Saints, we have a real problem today. There are people, both saved and unsaved, that are carrying very, very, very thin Bibles. 
extremely thin and extremely small. And I'm not talking about the size. I'm talking about the things that they've taken ripped right out of the Bible. For instance, in Genesis, it says very clearly, God created them male and female. Two genders. Well, there are people that disagree with that, and they begin to rip out anything in the Bible that has to do with gender. Because to them, there's many genders, 67, 82, however many genders. There seems like one's coming up every week. So they disagree with that. The Bible also says in Genesis that God defined marriage, instituted marriage between a man and a woman. Well, I disagree with that as well. That's not modern thinking. I'm going to rip all those pages out of the Bible. The Bible says that we should deal justly that we should be kind to the sojourner, the widow, and the orphan. The Bible says that we're all created in the image of God. Every single life has value. Well, no, don't like that either, so I'm going to start ripping all that out of the Bible. In the New Testament, we're told that a, a pastor, a leader in the church, is someone who's called and should have a sterling character. And then we have these little three words, out to teach. That's, that's a definition of a gifting. And sometimes, you know, I, I know pastors who have been pastors longer than me have never taught a public Bible study. They do home devotions and things, but their calling specifically is an administrative calling or a calling to missions. And they haven't taught a Bible study. That's not what they're called to do. But today, you know, I just want a pastor who um, is funny who is relevant, who is sort of more of a motivational speaker, and I really don't care about his character. So now you have to take out of the Bible First and Second Timothy, First Peter chapter 5, the book of Titus, anything that talks about that. You know, I've talked to some believers, some, some Christians will actually tell you this. I'm not an Old Testament Christian. They've taken the entire Old Testament out of the Bible because they're just New Testament Christians. Wow, can you believe that? My dear daughter and I, we were in a store the other day. And of course, as soon as the Lord opened the door to share the gospel, I was sharing the gospel with this uh, man, I believe the owner of the store possibly. But he told me, he said, Christians today need to take out the New Testament. He said literally these words, right, yeah. Bree? Yeah. Rip the New Testament out. We're to follow the God of the Old Testament. And I said, dear friend, the Old and the New Testament, God is one and the same. Mm -hmm. Listen, I want to read you a verse. Romans chapter 12 says this. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's the New King James. Let me read it to you in the New Living Translation. It says this, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Did you see that? The New Living Translation says, God, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. This is what it means to be a Christian. I believe the entire counsel of God's word. That's what it means. I believe in the inerrancy of God's word. That's what it means. I believe in Genesis to Revelation. I have no trouble with the Bible. And even deeper than that, according to this verse, it means that the Bible, God's Word, is changing the way I think. Changing, transforming my mind, renewing my mind, cleansing my mind of things that are not true. Not true about God, not true about man, not true about heaven. So that my mind is being changed by this Word. Not me changing the Word according to my mind. See, that's what's happening today, is a lot of people are changing God's word according to their thinking, not allowing God's word to change their thinking. And because of that, they carry a very thin Bible. Most of their Bible has got pages torn out of it, and it becomes very small and very thin. 
Here's the problem with that. When you begin to do that, when you begin to take things out of the Bible that you disagree with or have trouble with, the problem is now you end up with a Bible according to you, you end up with a God according to you, and you end up with a heaven according to you. And the big trouble with that is that heaven according to you doesn't exist, that God and that Bible according to you don't exist. Saints, listen, we only have one Bible, this one. From Genesis to Revelation, all of it, God's counsel, all of it, God's word. We receive it as such. Saints, we only have one God, and that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change, and we only have one heaven. May you carry a Bible that is the whole Bible. May you carry a Bible that is the whole counsel of God. May you allow God's word to change your thinking. And don't fall into the trap of beginning to tear pages out of the Bible and make a Bible that's according to you. That Bible, dear friend, doesn't exist. That God doesn't exist. And that heaven doesn't exist. Don't fall into that trap. May that encourage you today. May you believe in the whole Bible and not a Bible full of holes. God bless you.